All right, let's talk about linear momentum in fluid mechanics. Uh, we can use linear momentum to actually find um, forces or resultant forces on uh, pipes, nozzles, anything that has uh, liquid or fluid moving within it. So let's start with the most basic, um, basic law to kind of see where a linear momentum fits into fluid mechanics. Um, you know from physics and dynamics that the sum of all the forces on a certain body is equal to the mass times the acceleration. That's pretty standard. And we know from dynamics that acceleration is actually uh, or it, Acceleration we can write as uh, the derivative of the velocity, right, uh, times mass. So this is actually acceleration. <clears throat> and m is a constant, so we can take the ddt operator out. We can say sum of all the forces is equal to the derivative in respect to time of the mass times the velocity vector, right? And this, from physics and dynamics, you know, is momentum. And a lot of books to use different notations, but um, I learned that we can write momentum as capital letter G. And that just stands for momentum, right? And so, when we're studying a control volume, when we're studying a certain type of fluid, we draw an imaginary boundary, right? And we figure out, okay, Let's see what's happening to this fluid. And, and, and this would be the control volume. And then you're studying all the fluid inside that control volume. Okay? And in fluid mechanics, we can say that... Uh, oops, DDT of the momentum, which is usually denoted uh, G, uh, G dot, with a little dot on top of it, of the body that's contained inside the control volume. Okay? And that's usually in in stationary uh, scenarios like um, let's say we had a nozzle and the nozzle wasn't moving but the water inside the nozzle was moving. Well, for those types of situations we can just say that the momentum is equal to or the momentum rate is equal to um, the sum of all the linear momentum flow rate that's coming out of the control volume, so the stuff coming out, minus the sum of all the linear momentum flow rate that's coming in. So the momentum coming, or the momentum rate coming out, minus the momentum rate coming in, into the control volume, right? And linear momentum, or ln, um, is used. It's it's just the mass flow rate, or the mass rate times the velocity. Okay. And if we said rho, if we said the density of a fluid was constant everywhere, so maybe we're studying water in a hose. If that was constant, we can say that the mass rate is equal to rho times q. All right, because rho is um, rho is it's a density, so it's it's a it's a type of mass per unit volume, and q we know is our flow rate or volumetric flow rate, so it's it's volume time or volume over seconds, and you see the the volumes cancel out, and we get mass per second, right? <clears throat> and that's that. That's our mass per time, right? Mass you derive mass. It's mass rate, mass over time. And our linear momentum is so if 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 all of this was true we can say, okay, well, the linear momentum 
flow is going to be equal to rho times q times v, where this is the mass mass rate, right? So this might be a little confusing. Let's let's jump into an example and see how uh, this kind of works out. And when you're solving these types of problems, m make sure uh, if you're in metric unit, you're using you know your standard kilograms, uh, seconds, and if you're in the U.S. customary units, you're using pound, foot, uh, second, and then for mass, you would use slugs. All right. So let, let's go into an example. Uh, I have one right here, and let's let's ex let's explore this concept of linear momentum and how we can use it. So here we have we have a tube or a, a pipe coming in, and here we have a nozzle attached, and these two things here are bolts. So they attach this nozzle tip to the rest of the rest of the hose or, or pump or whatever it is. And the, the, the diameter of the circular uh, uh, tube is two inches here, and the tip of the nozzle here is one inch, okay? And I only do a cross-sectional area of the entire thing, so there's actually bolts, you know, around the nozzle. And here we have a, a volumetric flow rate Q coming in, and we know Q is going to be uh, through continuity, we know Q is going to be equal everywhere. So, oh, and here it's a uh, it's free jet. It's it's water, and it's uh, it's also a free jet. We know free jet. There's the pressure at this point is equal to zero. And the question asks, what is a re the required uh, resultant force of the bolt to keep this nozzle attached? So water's you know, getting pumped in, it's getting, it's getting, um, it's exiting here at the tip, and that's going to cause a force in the bolts. And so we're trying to figure out what's, what's the force in the bolt, you know, to keep the nozzle from not coming off, okay? And we can model the system as the nozzle. We have the nozzle, right? And we also have the body of fluid that's contained inside the control volume. And our control volume, I'm going to choose it to be here. Okay. The only reason I chose it because this is where the most dramatic change happens, right? It goes from two inches to one inch, right? And we also have the force of bolts here. And so if we look at the system only, so let's look at the nozzle which is kind of this thing right here, right? That's, that's this piece. And then, so it's going to be the nozzle, so this is the nozzle, and then the body that's contained inside the control volume, and that's that. And let's call this point, let's call this point one, let's call this point two, okay? So, Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. There's a little, a little gauge here, and it reads 5 psi. Okay, and here we know the pressure is zero, right? Because it's open to the atmosphere. It's a free jet. So um, let's let's just we know that the sum of all the forces is going to be equal to. Um, the momentum, or if we derive momentum, we get MA, right? So this is kind of like saying our MA of the system. So our system is the nozzle and the body that's controlled inside the control volume. So let's let's draw a free body diagram of this. We know um, we know this is the control volume. We know that the resultant forces of the bolt. We just call it bolt is going to be this way, right, because the water is getting pushed out that way, so it's wanting to push the nozzle with it. So the bolts have to keep it contained. We, the bolts have to be this way in order to keep the nozzle from going that way. So we can just say, you know, all those bolts that are, are, are placed around the nozzle, we can just 
find a resultant force. That, that's what they want, right? And then we we cut off we cut off the oops we cut off the nozzle here, right? Okay. And we know that this is pressurized everywhere inside. So our pressure distribution here is going to be like this, right? And the we, we can we can call this force or this force FP or the force of the pressure. And you know the force of the pressure is equal to the actual pressure of the centroid times the area. And the pressure we know is five pounds per inch squared times the area. Well, the area is going to be pi over four times uh, the diameter squared, and in this case, our diameter is two inches squared. And if we work this out, you notice that the inches are going to cancel out. The inches squared is going to cancel out, um, and we get five times pi. Right, because this is two times two, or two squared is four over four is one. And then you have inch squared over inch squared, and you get just pounds. Right. So that's our force of the pressure distribution. And we set that up. I'll finish off this example in the next video.